Around seven years ago, I, mid-30s male, was in a relationship with A, early 30s female. We had gone to university together, where we met and got together. We did the same course and ended up both getting jobs at the same consultancy firm, but in different offices after graduating. Long story short, she ended up cheating on me with a co-worker in her office. It went on for a while and it destroyed me when I found out. This was the first time anything like that had happened to me, and I really thought we were going to spend the rest of our lives together. Needless to say, I was barely functioning a few months after breaking up. I couldn't sleep or focus and had very acute waves of anxiety. I was in a really bad place overall. I spoke to my ex for a while after we broke up, but I ended up going no contact after a few months. I can't remember exactly when as I deleted everything related to her from my phone. Eventually, after several months of spiraling downwards, my parents booked me a doctor's visit, and I ended up on an SNRI for a few years. I also saw a therapist weekly for about nine months. Everything slowly improved, and I was able to pull myself together. I stopped taking the antidepressant after two years, and I was pretty much back to functioning normally. It has been another three years since then, bringing us to the issue this post is about. At work, I was recently involved in bidding on a large program of works, multiple projects in a single package. When we were awarded the work, I was asked to manage the overall program. I would still report to several senior members of staff, but I was in charge of all the day-to-day -day decisions and pulling together teams to deliver the individual projects. My ex was put forward as one of the people to run one of the projects. She had been made aware of the work and was expecting to be given the role. By this point, neither she nor I knew the other had any involvement in the project. When I saw her name on the list for a proposed team, I spoke to the account leader who had ultimate responsibility for the work slash client. I told him that I couldn't work with A. I had some power to change the teams I was offered, but I would have to justify my reasoning. Because of that, I decided to involve the account leader since I didn't think I should make a unilateral decision based on personal issues. He asked me why and I gave a short factual answer. I did include the fact that she cheated on me. I said to the account leader that I would understand if I needed to step back and not manage the program if this was going to create issues. Obviously, I did want the role, so I wouldn't have been thrilled if this option was taken. The account lead told me he would find someone else to do A's proposed role and that he was empathetic to my feelings. Ultimately, I think it would just have been more hassle to replace me on the project than her due to my prior involvement in winning the work. When A was told the news, she contacted me through work teams and asked if she could call me. I said yes, and she called my personal phone and we spoke. During the call, she was very angry. She said she felt like she was being punished for something that happened several years ago. She said how miserable she was for so long after and how she's worked on herself, etc. She feels it's unfair that she is facing consequences now. Her life definitely did get turned upside down after the breakup, as did mine. She told me she now has to return to her previous work, which she has been looking to get out of for the last year now. I explained that regardless of how much time passes, I do not ever want her in my life again in any capacity. I explained that I didn't have her removed from the project directly. I was just unwilling to work with her, and the business made the decision to replace her instead of me. She said she understood, but that I shouldn't have said anything, and we could be professional and keep contact to a minimum. I said I didn't want to have to do that, and I didn't feel I owed her that. She was unsatisfied with the response but the conversation remained cordial until we hung up. It's worth noting that the project she would have been working on is a desirable opportunity that I am sure she was excited about. She's more than qualified for the role, and she would have had reason to expect she was a lock for it. I will also say that when I spoke to the account lead about her, I told him why we broke up and offered to step away from the project, knowing that it was likely going to be her they replaced. So, am I the jerk? I could have worked with her, it would have bothered me for sure, but I could have suffered through it. I knew there was a high likelihood the business would make arrangements to keep me in the role instead of her, and that definitely factored into my decision to say I was unwilling to work with her. If it had been 50, 50, I would have probably just suffered working with her because the role is a great opportunity, and I wouldn't want to risk losing it. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. Not the idiot. 
this was never your call to make. You gave your line manager the facts as you saw them, and they made the decision to remove her from the project. They could have removed you as you offered, or they could have removed both of you to keep things fair. But what they did was their choice for the benefit of the business and not the individuals. If you'd kept her on and had to leave the project, or take her off because of clashing personalities, then neither of you would have looked professional. Better to avoid the problem in the first place. Comment two, I think the only mistake you made was allowing her to call your personal phone. If she has an issue with how the company has handled this, she needs to deal with it professionally and in writing. Calling you to have a go at you about it was wrong. And she knew that from the outset because she didn't put it in an email, didn't put it in Teams, and didn't call your work phone. Evidence, if you needed it, that she can't be professional, not the idiot. Now, for the update. Thanks for checking in on my situation. So after the whole fiasco with A being removed from the project, things seemed to settle down for a bit. I was focused on the work, and it felt like maybe, just maybe, I could move past the drama, but life has a funny way of throwing curveballs when you least expect them. A couple of days later, I was called into an impromptu meeting with HR. Turns out, A didn't take her removal from the project lying down. She filed a formal complaint against me, claiming that I had used my position to unfairly influence the staffing decision due to a personal vendetta. The HR rep was very serious, saying that this could be seen as an abuse of power and that they had to investigate. I was floored. I thought I had handled things by the book involving the account leader and all. But here I was, sitting in an HR office, feeling like I was back in the principal's office in high school. They asked me all sorts of questions about our past, our breakup, and the nature of my conversation with the account leader. I told them everything, how I had offered to step down, how I just couldn't work with her. But as I spoke, I could see the skepticism in their eyes. The next day, the account leader pulled me aside. He was under pressure too, now that HR was involved. He said that the optics weren't good. And while he believed me, it was becoming a bigger issue than just staffing a project. The company was worried about a potential lawsuit, bad press, the works. He suggested that it might be best for everyone if I took a step back from the project until things cooled off. I was angry, really angry. It felt like A was getting her revenge, twisting the knife in a wound that had never fully healed. I had worked hard to win that project, and now I was being sidelined because of something that happened years ago. It was like I was being punished for being the victim. But then another bomb dropped. One of the senior partners who had been a mentor to me called me into his office. He had heard about the situation and had done some digging of his own. He found out that A's current project was in trouble and there were whispers that she was looking for a way out before it all came crashing down. He suspected that she wanted the new project as a lifeline a way to jump ship before her current work imploded. I couldn't believe it. All this time, I thought A was just upset about losing a good opportunity, but she might have been trying to save her own skin. It made me question everything, wondering if she had ever really changed or if she was still the same person who had cheated on me all those years ago. The partner told me he would handle things with HR, that he had my back. He said that he knew my work and my character and he wouldn't let this situation ruin my career. I was grateful, but I also felt a sense of shame. I had wanted to be the bigger person, to handle things professionally, but instead I had let my emotions get the better of me. In the end, A was transferred to another department, far away from the project and from me. The HR investigation concluded that there was no wrongdoing on my part, but the whole ordeal left a sour taste in my mouth. I had wanted to prove that I was over her, that I could be the better person, but instead, I felt like I had stooped to her level. And now, here I am back on the project, but with a new sense of wariness. I'm watching my back, making sure that I don't give anyone a reason to doubt me again. It's not how I wanted things to go, but at least I can focus on my work again. Try to rebuild what was almost torn down by the past rearing its ugly head. Thanks for reading. My husband cheats with his sister-in-law and his family tries to steal my baby but I fight back and win full custody, leaving them with nothing. Throw away, I am a 26-year-old female. Just had my baby boy two weeks ago. It's very rewarding, but I am so tired. 
I'm probably running on eight hours of sleep total. My mother-in-law and I have never really got along. She's a boy mom who thinks her son is her husband. My husband does an amazing job at setting boundaries and shutting her down when she makes comments like, I'll always be the woman in your life, and he said, You are an important woman in my life, but you are my mother and not my wife. And when you say things like that, it makes me uncomfortable. Four days ago, my husband tested positive for infection 19, so sadly he can't be in the house, and I'm doing everything myself. My sister and mother help when they can, but they live almost two hours away. He's staying in his mother's guest house because he can't be home. And at that moment, I hadn't slept in about three days. I hadn't showered, and I think the only thing I had eaten was an apple and peanut butter. My mom called me, and I told her I'm really struggling. So she said she can come down until he's clear. I also called my husband and asked if his mother-in-law would come down until she gets here, so I could shower and get a meal. She came down and it was good for all of 30 minutes before she started criticizing everything. This house is a pigsty. You look horrible. You should give him a little cereal mixed in your breast milk. I think he can just cry it out. You're letting yourself go. The last straw was her telling me, you can't be a good mother if you can't handle a little stress and being alone with the baby. My son deserves a break. I snapped and told her, would you please stop it? I asked for help not to be berated. I just gave birth. I started bawling my eyes out and she said, oh, don't be dramatic. I don't know what my baby saw it in. You're going to have my grandson be a tulip. I yelled at her to shut the hell up and get out. I'll deal with it until she gets back. She tells me I can't speak to her that way. And I told her, well, I just did now GTFO while you can. She left my mom came in while I was bawling my eyes out. And so was my son, but I just could not stop the tears from coming out. So I was trying to soothe him through tears. She took him and I took a nap. When I woke up, I called her to apologize for yelling. Not what I said and said I was really tired and hungry, but she cut me off and said, don't expect me to watch him again or help. I understand that she's upset, but I'm really struggling. And her as a mother should have given me advice, not berate me. My mom is completely on my side and she's upset. My husband called a little while ago and told me you had every right to be pissed. My sister-in-law told me I was a witch and could have been nicer and she was just trying to help. Edit. I made an edit and removed that I wanted to smooth things over with my mother-in-law. I read the comments and they make a lot of sense. I didn't do anything wrong. I'm two weeks postpartum. My husband is sick. I'm sleep deprived. I'm hungry and I'm hormonal. Like I said, I only said I want to smooth things over because I am very hormonal. And I did feel bad for yelling, but not for what I said, which is why I apologized. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, not the idiot, but granny should lose her visiting privileges until she can learn how to act like a dignified, domesticated human being. Acting like that towards a freshly postpartum mother is absolutely feral behavior, and she ought to be ashamed. Don't you ever apologize to her again, and don't ever ask her for help. It's not worth the hassle. Comment two, not the idiot. Don't worry about the big decisions while snot is still flowing. Just remove the irritant mother-in-law to subside and deal with the problems in front of you one at a time. Also, congratulations on your baby. What a load of nonsense cereal in a two week old. Jesus flipping Christ no, now for the update, thanks for sticking around. A lot has happened since my last post. So after the whole blow up with my mother-in-law, things took a turn for the worse. My husband's test came back false positive. He didn't have infection 19 after all. You'd think that'd be good news, right? Well, it was until he came home and we found out why he was really staying at his mom's place. Turns out he and my sister-in-law had been getting a little too close for comfort. My world came crashing down. My husband, the one person I thought I could trust, was cheating on me with his own sister-in-law. I couldn't believe it. I felt like a fool, especially because I had been defending him to everyone. I was so focused on my mother-in-law's antics that I didn't see the real betrayal happening right under my nose. And the worst part, I was completely oblivious to it all. I thought he was just being a good son, taking care of his sick mother. But no, he was using that as a cover to cheat on me. The aftermath was messy. My sister-in-law, who had called me a witch, was now trying to play the victim, saying she fell for him because she was lonely and he was there for her. My mother-in-law, of course, took her daughter's side, saying it was my fault for pushing him away with my postpartum mood swings. Can you believe that? 
as if giving birth and taking care of a newborn wasn't enough, now I had to deal with this betrayal. But it didn't end there. In the midst of all this chaos, my mom, who had been my rock, slipped and fell at my house. She broke her hip and needed surgery. I was torn between taking care of my baby, dealing with my cheating husband, and now my injured mother. It was like everything that could go wrong did. My husband begged for forgiveness, saying it was a mistake and that he didn't mean to hurt me. But how could I trust him again? How could I look at him the same way? I was so angry and hurt I couldn't even look at him. I told him to leave, to go stay with his mother and sister-in-law because I couldn't deal with him right now. In the end, my sister came down to help with the baby and take care of our mom. She was a lifesaver. Without her, I don't know how I would have managed. She helped me get through the days even when I felt like I couldn't go on. And just when I thought things couldn't get any more complicated, my husband's family lawyer showed up with papers. My mother-in-law was trying to get custody of my son, claiming I was an unfit mother because of my emotional state. The nerve of that woman. After everything her family had put me through, she had the audacity to try and take my child away from me. But I wasn't going to let that happen. I hired a lawyer and fought back. It was a long and exhausting battle, but in the end, the judge saw through her lies. I got to keep my son, and my husband was granted supervised visits until we could figure things out. It's been a week of hell, but I'm starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. My mom is recovering well, and my sister is still here, helping me get back on my feet. I don't know what the future holds for my marriage, but right now, my focus is on my son and getting through each day. Thanks for reading. My first date insults my height and spreads lies at work. So I take the job, expose her deception, and watch her career crumble. For context, I am a 35-year-old male and had a first date with a 27-year-old female that didn't last more than 15 minutes. I am 5 foot 6 inches tall and she is 5 foot 7 inches tall. This matters. Both of us are in good shape and look nice. This also matters. We've been talking for a couple of days, so I invited her to a Mexican restaurant I like for lunch today. We meet up and everything seems well initially. We both greet each other outside the restaurant with a smile and a hug. I hold the door open for her. We get seated and situated, order food, and the conversation starts. I'll lay out the conversation how it happened, separated by alternating paragraphs between her and me. We start out pretty normal, asking how our day was going, discussing our occupations, and so on. After the work conversation, she drops the comment, I didn't realize you were so short, and it went downhill from there. I'll start there. Word for word, after ordering food and receiving our drinks and chatting about work, she interrupts and says, I didn't realize you were so short. To be honest, I'm not sure I can date you and take this seriously. I respond, Oh, I listed my height in my profile and we've been talking for a few days. I didn't think this was a problem for you. I didn't notice. Is this a deal breaker for you? I mean, there are plenty of guys out there who are shorter than their partners and it works great. Look at Zendaya and Tom Holland. She liked Marvel in her profile. To be honest, taller girls are kind of my thing, which is why I liked you in the first place. Well, Tom Holland makes a lot of money. Oh, so it could be a money thing? I do pretty well for myself. What are you making? About $60,000. I make like four times more than you, so I think I do well enough. Yeah, well, I can find someone who makes more than that, who is taller and less ugly. Gotcha. Well, I know why you're single now, and I don't think this is going to work out. You're in your 30s, short and single. Good luck finding anyone. The problem isn't me here. I'm looking for a real one who I can share my time and energy with, and I end up meeting people like you. I then take out my wallet, grab a $20 bill and say, this should take care of the food and put it on the table. I then grab a $1 bill, put that on the table as well and say, and this is for your time. I walk out of the restaurant with a smirk on my face and her jaw drops to the floor without another word spoken. I am really unsure here. I know I dodged a huge bullet, that's for sure, but am I a jerk for doing this? Thoughts, update? More context? For more context, I didn't really think too much about only leaving $1.20. Maybe I should have dropped $40. I just wanted to get out of there ASAP. The $20 covered her meal and drink, and I assume some of the tip too. I also assume that my order would be canceled. 
although there's no way a restaurant would make her pay for something she didn't eat. If she ended up staying, that is, who knows. But y'all are right, I should have paid directly. That's my regret. I've been reading and responding my best on and off. As far as this being fake, I don't think I'd be posting and responding as much as I have on a throwaway if this wasn't for real. And like many of you have said, defending this being real. Is it so hard to believe that someone would stand up for themselves when push comes to shove? I admittedly took too long to realize she was actually being rude. We had great conversations the few days prior. The comments threw me off, and I guess I thought she was messing around. But when I did, I said what I said and did what I did, and it actually happened. I don't know who to prove that to the internet, though. That's all I have. Thanks for the comments and advice for those who did. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment 1, I might have believed this if you didn't add the ridiculous parting zinger. You should have said you put the $1.20 note down, walked to the door, and then turned and said, Oh, and one other thing, honey. This is for your time and flicked a silver dollar Michael Jackson in smooth criminal style from 20 feet away, so it landed in her cleavage. After that, you whipped on your sunglasses, turned away, and the Who's Won't Get Fooled Again started playing. Yeah! Comment two, this has to be fake, right? I don't know anywhere outside of fast food that is as cheap as $20. The $1 tip seems like a giant F you for the server too. Now for the update, thanks for sticking around for the update. So a lot has happened since the last post. I thought that restaurant disaster was the end of it, but life had other plans. Turns out the woman I had that terrible date with works at the same company as my sister. Small world, right? My sister, who had no idea about the date, mentioned me in passing, and that's when things got messy. This woman, let's call her Miss Marvel, decided to spin a story about how I was the one who was rude and demeaning to her because of her height. She told my sister and anyone else at the office who would listen. My sister confronted me, confused and angry, thinking I was some kind of jerk. I had to explain the whole situation, which was embarrassing to say the least. But here's where it gets worse. Miss Marvel's best friend works in HR. Suddenly, I'm getting calls about a potential job opportunity at their company. It's a significant step up from my current position, and the salary is tempting but I can't shake the feeling that this is a setup. Why would they want me after what happened? I decided to go for the interview against my better judgment. I needed to know if this was genuine or just another game. The interview went surprisingly well and they offered me the job on the spot. I was stunned. It felt like a win, but it was too easy, too convenient. I accepted the offer, but as I was leaving, I saw Miss Marvel smirking at me from across the hall. That's when it hit me. She was using her connections to pull me into her world where she could make my life miserable. I felt like a fool walking right into her trap. But I needed that job. I was desperate to move up, and this was my chance. So I swallowed my pride and started working there. Every day was a battle, avoiding Miss Marvel and her snide remarks, but I kept my head down and worked hard. Then, another surprise. My sister called me one evening, sounding frantic. She had been laid off, and the reason cited was downsizing. But we both knew the truth, Ms. I. Marvel had orchestrated it to get back at me. My sister was collateral damage in her twisted game. I was furious. I wanted to confront Miss Marvel, to make her pay for what she did to my sister. But I knew that would only make things worse. So I did the only thing I could. I went to my boss, laid out the entire story, and resigned. I couldn't work in a place that allowed such manipulation and cruelty. Walking away from that job was one of the hardest things I've ever done. It meant giving up a dream position, but I couldn't stay. Not with the knowledge that my presence there had cost my sister her job. I felt weak, like I had let Miss Marvel win. But I also knew that I had to stand up for what was right, even if it meant losing out. My sister and I are closer now, supporting each other through this mess. We're both looking for new jobs, and it's tough, but we'll get through it. And as for Miss Marvel, I've forgiven her. Not because she deserves it, but because holding on to anger only hurts me. I've learned a lot about myself through this ordeal. I've seen the lengths people will go to for revenge, and I've felt the sting of betrayal. But I've also seen the strength that comes from standing by your family and your values. 
Thanks for reading. If you liked this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.